for recording. So you can go ahead. Great. Okay, welcome everyone. I am calling to order the March 30th <laughs> Governance Organization and Legislation Committee of the Town Council at 9.01. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. So let's see, I'm just gonna check the, okay, we don't have any attendees right now. So just doing a quick check there. Um, so we just need really, to confirm real quick that everyone can hear and be heard. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. I always forget that. Um, okay, let's start with you, Mandy. Present. Pat? Present. Anika? Present. Jennifer? Present. Excellent. Okay, great. Um, so today on the agenda, we'll just do a quick review so that we can talk about timing and things. Um, we are going to go back to the town council rules of procedure based on the conversation that the town council had last week. Um, and hopefully we'll be ready to bring back any recommendations that we may have so that it can happen in time for Monday's meeting. Um, and then we have a discussion and vote potentially on the town council um, standing committee structure. That's something that we've been sort of lightly discussing, but haven't been able to have a robust discussion about yet. Um, and it's possible that Lynn will be joining us for that. Um, she did have some, some, some input that she wanted to share on that. So I did invite her to join. Um, and then we have the 2022 Juneteenth proclamation to review and vote on. And I have invited, so um, we have Ms. Bridges and Dr. Amilkar Shabazz. I'm not sure, is, is D part of that, Anika? Will D be? Um, I'm not sure. I had just followed up with my mom, Deborah Bridges and, and uh, Dr. Amilkar Shabazz. Okay, so we can ask if he if he does it come at 10. I've asked them to come at 10 a.m. So hoping we can get uh, some things done and then we'll pause at 10 to make sure we get that done. It's, it's um, we have some time on this one, but since it was already referred and um, you know things are moving pretty quickly, I thought we would get this one done. So I think what I'd like to do, yes, Anika. Uh, just sorry, um, Shabazz did receive his link. Excellent, perfect. Um, so why don't we go ahead and start with the rules of procedure. And I just went back and listened to the town council discussion just to sort of remind myself what the main points were. Um, and I think mostly the discussion revolved around rule six and mostly the discussion revolved around the use of the word ethics and what ethics um, means in this context and how and if what sort of recommendation might we want to make with respect to expanding what we already have. Um, so let me just kind of go through the comments that I heard quickly from the town council. So I think um, Andy had talked about whether, you know, just sort of the use of that word. And then in a later comment after Kathy spoke about possibly referencing particular pieces from the ethics law, um, Andy had suggested that, you know, we may not need to do that. Rather, we have a robust law that the state has already put in place and should we just be linking to it. Mandy suggested, um, that there was a place where conflict of interest was already being discussed. And so potentially that might be, although in the 
description, it also talked about ethics. So um, maybe we can find a way to expand on that particular paragraph and rename it. Um, and Lynn, I think Lynn's suggestion was to really keep it simple and just do a link to the mass ethics law. Um, I'm trying to think if, if there was anybody else. Um, Dorothy supported Kathy. Um, Dorothy uh, thought that we should include some specifics in the actual rules. So that was that was the overall discussion. And now I just want to open it up to members um, for ideas and things on this. And Mandy, do you want to bring it up or are we do we want to discuss without it up? There we go. <laughs> Great. Yes, Jennifer. Yeah, I just had a question. So it is the concern, I don't know, that there's something that should be stated that's not in the state law? I mean, is that what you were getting that people were concerned about? That's a really good question. Um, I think what I was getting is that we should be more explicit in our rules. Um, and the concern was like Kathy pulled out three items and I think she pulled those items out based on some conversations that residents have been having or some concerns um, and just sort of things that have been coming up. But my understanding is the ethics law is, it's not limited to those three items. Um, and so therefore I think the counter concern to that was, well, we don't wanna just pull three items because that could be arbitrary. Um, and how do you know which ones to pull? I didn't get that it was um, about including anything that wasn't already in the state law, but if someone else did, please speak up on that. Right, so if there isn't, then we could just probably link to the state law. Yeah, right. I mean, that does seem like the simplest solution. I'm sorry, Anika, I just spoke out. I didn't see your hand. That's that's fine. I'm just trying to train myself to use that raise hand. Button. Yeah, and I probably <laughs> should do. <laughs> I failed so far. I, know, I think you're better at it than I am. Um, but no, I I agree. Um, I agree with with Jennifer at this point. Unless that unless we can identify something, um, or, or feel or otherwise that it has been left out or that we would like to include. Um, could and, and also could we be confusing at all if you know we're seemingly adding or explaining something if it is just kind of this is the rule, the law, what everyone has to follow in general. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that was sort of the concern. Um, Pat, you did yeah, you? Yeah, I put. I yeah. I agree with Jennifer and Anika right now. So I just went. Yeah, I, there was, um, yes, Jennifer, go ahead. No, 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 go, it's not that important. I, I was going to say that I thought what Mandy pointed out about 6.5 was actually, it, I'm, I was sort of surprised at myself for having not seen that because I do think that that, what about the possibility of, of renaming that um, and but bringing that up right to the front to the top of rule six and saying that we comply and just linking as everybody has said to the state ethic um, so that we sort of right off the bat are talking about that. Yes, Pat. I can see the link to the whole ethics piece in M MGL, but there's such crap going on right now around conflict of interest and people being attacked somehow or other pulling it out and sticking it in the front is like responding to that crap in a way that i don't think we should it is important we all do the best job we can around conflict of interest uh, but i don't think it needs to be the thing at the beginning J just and that's that's a very um quick reaction but it feels right you know i'm just tired of how things are being used right now. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate that intuition there on that. And um, I just, I guess I wonder what other members of the town council who have expressed their concern about this. Um, I think that what Mandy's doing here, in my view, is satisfactory. I, I think, I guess I just want to, and I can't see, um, but our title of six um, includes the word ethics. Are we comfortable with the order in which those words are used at the top and then in terms of the order in which we're actually going to address it? Um, and maybe when Mandy finishes, we can just scroll up and look at that to make sure that so what I just did is conflict and interest in ethics. The MGL chapter is the reference that chapter is actually titled um, code uh, conduct of public officials and employees. So mm. it covers both conflict of interest and the whole gift, you know, ethics sort of side along with the conflict side of that one chapter. And it's called code of conduct. Um, but yeah, let me scroll up give me a second just so i understand um mandy are you saying that that chapter does not encompass all of the um rules of ethics from the I state believe it does I, I think it actually does um okay. i'm working on confirming that and i'll add okay. more if it doesn't okay. um but it is not it, it doesn't you know like i said its title is code of is conduct of public officials. So it doesn't actually set. if you look at the subsections, like section one or two, it talks about, um, you know, some of those section titles are corrupt gifts, offers or promises to influence, you know, conflict of interest of public official, um, gifts, offers of promise. Yeah. You know, and so it talks, there's a opinions of state ethics commission. So throughout the sections, it uses those words, but the title is not. And I just wanted to let people know that, but I think that I'm, I'm working on it. I think that might be the only chapter in MGL. Oh. Jennifer. Yeah, so I don't want to get to a discussion about specifics, but I think some of the concerns, so we, prior to being on the council in December, we had that new council orientation and Lauren Goldberg gave the over, you know, which is very uh, about conflict of interest and when to recuse yourself. But now that we're back on the council, I wonder if sometimes we should, I don't know how to have some updates. So like when Lynn's acknowledged that her husband had been one of the signatories to the letter for the pickleball, I can see where someone wouldn't, a member, no, no, they should say that. And even with Dorothy recusing herself with the Amherst Women's Club, she probably should have acknowledged that she worked with them. But actually the next day, she and I were talking and it's not clear she actually had to because she's not an officer. She's a member the way I'm a member and many of us probably are of Amherst Cinema. So I think some of it is it's, we, we may just need to check in because I think we can all inadvertently, it's just very easy. I, like if my husband was a signatory to the pickleball, I don't think I'd know to say something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when all else fails or when we're unsure, and this is what th what this discussion has done for me is to help me see that calling the ethics, you know, commission and asking questions or whatever is always a possibility. It sounds like that's a resource to us. Um, and are, are you, Jennifer, saying that you would like something to be included in here that references um, kind of that check-in that you're talking about or how yeah and it doesn't even have to be with the ethics commission i'm just um uh, yeah i don't know what that's why i don't know where if it goes here but i think that there's just to i, I think that there are things that are inadvertent and i hate for people to be um criticized when it's it's because some of it's very gray i think yeah, yeah, it is. Um, Mandy, I think you had your hand up first and then Pat. So I admit a lot of it's very gray, but it's our job as elected officials to know the law. That's why we have to go through training and to seek 
the advice of the ethics commission when there are questions about it. Um, if that requires reading and going through the training multiple times, right? Um, you know, and and yes, Dorothy may not have legally had to recuse herself, but she did have to legally, under the law, file a disclosure, right? And, which was not done. Right. Um, but you know, and and so it's up to us as elected officials to know the rules, to seek them out, and when you have questions, to ask those questions. I don't know how you put that into a rule of procedure, right. though, because you know that's just what we have to do. Um, and it, as I will say to anyone, it is up to the individual person, as, as Attorney Goldberg will say, it's their job to do it, and it's their choice on whether it's a, an actual recusal need or not, right? And then it's, or just a disclosure where you can make a choice, where you can make a decision un, you know, uninfluenced by that association, and no one else can say in terms of that um, the if, if there's not an actual conflict that you have to recuse yourself if there's not an actual conflict but if there is there can be repercussions um, oh, and right. so you you need to make the right choice if there is an actual conflict because if you don't there can be repercussions if there's not an actual conflict no one can say well you didn't have a conflict but you still should have and I can get stuff but you know how to put that in the rules I think we just reference the section um, you know there's I think that's what we do and it's our jobs, you know, when you're a state employee, even if you're not elected, it's your job to, to know and to ask the questions when need be and, you know, we can as officials counsel, you know, mention when we see something going on, say, hey, know your rules, do you need to do something? right? Depending on what that rule is, and think about that before you make any other comments, do you need to do something under these rules? But I, you know, when I mentioned that at the meeting, I couldn't tell Dorothy she had to recuse herself. I could just say, right. hey, no, no, I, I know. hear there might be something, think about it and do what you need to do, right? right. No, um, no, no, I'm not even saying, I'm just saying that was a case for because it hadn't been thought about before. Right. Well, right. and so it's, it, yeah. it's the person who's looking at the agenda's job to think about it before and say, huh, I need to do something and you know we it, one way that happens in public hearings that i've done especially at the planning board is before you even you open the public hearing and the first question is are there any disclosures to be made you mm. know maybe that's something we need to add somewhere but adding that to every agenda item no not it's every it's a right. little cumbersome right because you know and so i don't know I don't know the proper way to put that in the rules. I would say keep the rules sort of as they are. Um, on that level, there might be a second section we want to reference, which is the financial disclosure section. I'm trying to figure out what that means right now. So I might add that in. Okay, take a look at that and we'll go. So Pat, your hand came up and then down and then Anika's hand came up. So, oh, and you're muted. Go to Anika, it's fine. Okay, great. Anika? Let me unmute. Uh, so I agree with both Mandy and Pat. I feel like it is, you know, we heard, I believe it was in our orientation, basically, if anything, you know, if it looks, walks, smells like a duck, you know, so I think that if, you know, for instance, if we're looking at something like if it could be reasonably perceived that there could be a conflict of interest, you file a report, you look into it. And if we're kind of looking at, all right, if you have a community member that sells red shirts and, you know, is is up for, you know, uh, whichever, some, something that's going on with town council and you're wearing a red shirt too, I mean, you might want to say something. Um, but I, I do think that it would be our responsibility to, you know, file what we need to file um, and also, but, you know, to, you know, support each other as well and, and just ask questions because I, I can see how with, um, you know, to Jennifer's point, you might not think, oh, someone supported the pickleball, you know, um, you know, could, could this be perceived in a certain way, but maybe just like refreshers of looking um, at your membership and, you know, what committees you're on, which this and just kind of, you know, looking at them double time, is there something, but um, 
you know, and then, so the last question would be, um, you know, if you're filing everything that you need to file, you know, you're, follow, you're following due procedure, then, you know, making sure that I think, especially for public, that they know where to go to access that information, um, you know, and then, you know, proceed accordingly. That's it. Anika, can I just ask you a follow up when you say so the public knows where to go, can you just say a little bit more on that one. Uh, well, you know, for instance, if you know someone has filed like a you know a conflict of interest or has you know. Um, you know made, made a statement in, re in regards to whatever we happen to be talking about a council, if they have. Um, if they have a perceived involvement or otherwise, and if these have been filed and are filed with the clerk, with the state, otherwise, um, just to ensure that the public would have access, you know, to be able to see these filings mm. and have access because this isn't just, you know, for us, right? It's also for the public. So, um, yeah, that's a really that's good where a lot of, you know, some of this confusion comes. So we're not you know, consistently going back and forth because the question would also be like, if you have a filing with this, is this something that we, and we could be, and I'm just not aware, are we responsible to announce this every and any time that something similar or related could come up, you know, or do uh, filings with the state serve as, you know, a finite example that can consistently be referred to? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I th Athena, would you be able to just speak to that for a second with respect to how would the public access any filings related to disclosures and things like that? Sure, so um, disclosures, and that, that would include disclosures like a blanket disclosure, like my spouse works for a higher ed institution. And so anything that comes up that has to do with the higher ed institution, um, there could be a potential, so a blanket statement like that, um, that's filed with the town clerk's office. And then also if there's a specific issue that comes up that you want to, that anyone files a disclosure about, that also gets filed with the town clerk's office. And those are all public records. So anybody can go and ask the town clerk if there's been a disclosure filed. Um, and you could ask that in a number of ways. You could ask if a certain counselor has filed a disclosure. You could ask if anybody's filed a disclosure regarding um, a certain institution or issue, um, and they, they can provide those records. Okay, great. Thank you. That's really helpful. Pat. Yeah, I'm, I'm maybe wasting people's time, but I feel like it is up to each counselor to err on the side of caution in the sense of if I'm a member of, I have volunteered at the survival center, I'm a member of the mobile market, uh, planning committee, uh, though, and those are things that could come before the council. And neither of those situations do I think would impact my decision making, maybe the planning one. But I feel like my responsibility is to say, I have, I'm a volunteer at the survival center. I'm a member of the mobile market planning committee. I'm uh, on, I'm a part of the uh, governing body or whatever of the Hill House. I feel like what I'm getting frustrated with is that we're, we're being very cavalier about what we're part of. And it doesn't mean, you know, Lynn can certainly vote on the pickleball courts, but I think, you know, I think that her saying, you know, it was kind of funny, but that was erring on the side of caution. And I think that we need to do that. I, as somebody who, has difficulty with rules. Um, I, the, the more we jam pack in here to address every little thing is, is a waste of our time and energy. What's here right now makes available to anybody who's even gonna look at this off the council, um, they have an understanding of what, where we're working from. So it just seems to me overkill to do more than that. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer. I was just gonna say, I agree. Having the link is is good for the public. I think I think if we provide that, we're good. 
Yeah, so it sounds like the general consensus is we do not need to include additional language. I'm going to pass it to Mandy in a second. I do, I do want to say um, that I think just maybe informally what Mandy suggested about our council president asking um, in the beginning of a meeting, not for every agenda item, but asking, you know, if you've reviewed the agenda and you have, if there are any disclosures, <laughs> um, you know, just to kind of keep it in our awareness um, and sort of build it into the fabric of what we're, um, of what we're doing from week to week. Um, so Mandy, will you share with us what you're, you've done here? Uh, so I, I highlighted for the reason of being able to tell the council what we changed from the first reading to the second reading. So that's why it's highlighted. Um, I, some people indicated that we should reference ethics somewhere. So I changed the title, um, you know, to indicate its conflict of interest and in ethics. Um, that's what MGL chapter 268A is the conflict of interest and in ethics chapter. 268B is the financial disclosure chapter. That looks like it's basically the stuff we have to do campaign finance wise. I'm not sure. I tried to review it somewhat quickly, um, but the the state page on um, on Massachusetts laws about ethics at mass.gov um, references both MGL 268A conflict of interest law and 268B financial disclosure law. So I thought I'd just list both of them. Um, as you saw, because you could probably see my screen as I was editing stuff, I put the hyperlinks into each of those. So they will be, if accepted, they will be just like this charter where there is a hyperlink to that section of the charter um, on the page or other MGLs where they go to that reference in the state laws so that they will take you to the legal law, not the um, website regarding ethics. There's a, there's a difference there. These will take you to the law, not the sort of website that says, here's what you can do, or here's your ask a question type thing, the informational website, it's the law. So, so that's all that's been done. Great, and that's consistent with what we've done throughout, referencing the charter or and other MGL um, chapters. So yeah. I think that that works. Um, and then in terms of the title of Rule Six, if we could just go back to that real quick. <clears throat> so we have code of ethics, conduct, and debate. Is everyone comfortable with those three words and the order of those words, or would we like to do something different there? Pat? Oh, Anika, I'm sorry. Anika, please. Um, okay, so I was I had my hand up right before we went to six. I just wanted to add that um, I think, Andy, what you did, that's really helpful. I think in this case, it is, it's great to, you know, point to law whenever we can, um, you know, so we're, we're not caught with speculation or otherwise. I think this is a really helpful way to just point to law. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I support that, those changes. And just last question, other we're on rule six. So was, um, and excuse me, if this was brought up, so was the word was the use of the word ethics here okay? Was there issue? Did anyone have issue with that, or was it was it okay here? No, I didn't hear any issue. the The issue was related more to when I listened again this morning. The issue was related more to we had the word in there, but we were only touching on one aspect of ethics, and I think we've covered our bases by including the law now that references all of it. Um, I think Andy did talk about the word civility as a possible replacement to the word ethics, but I'm not sure that he saw that we had included it. Could he you probably... repeat that word? I couldn't understand it. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. I think Andy had uh, talked about the word civility. Thank you. Thank you. Which we've used in other areas of this section. Um, but other than that, there wasn't, I guess I'm just like, did we want ethics to be the first code of ethics conduct and debate? Is that fine for everybody? And I saw Mandy's hand and then Jennifer's hand. Yeah, given the um, MGL title of code of conduct, you know, or conduct of, I think we could delete ethics um, completely 
and either just leave it as code of conduct and debate or leave or replace courtesy with civility because that's the word we were looking to replace with something and we came up with ethics ethics is sort of at least on the state level included in conduct um and so we could say code of civility conduct and debate or just code of conduct and debate or just code of conduct frankly <laughs> i'm not sure we even need the debate <laughs> mm -hmm. i know that does seem a little odd in there um jennifer yeah i was just gonna say i think if we're talking about conduct ethics ethics is not civility and conduct it's its own category i think mm -hmm. so you'd like to keep that word in there in no the i don't think i think if we have a code of ethics mm -hmm. i mean if we're talking about civility and conduct that's not ethics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if we go because we do have ethics further down right i think that's where ethics i, I see ethics and civility being different mm -hmm. this is the i'm sorry pat oh i'm sorry jennifer no keep, keep, keep oh going. i see no oh, maybe we should have ethics there because I'm, I'm sorry that's the overall rule in each section exactly yeah 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 i'm sorry that's like the rule six over our right, right over well i think we should have ethics actually there because it's one of the sub sub groups right because i think it's about. very different than civility mm-hmm mm-hmm I think what Mandy was saying, if I understood correctly, is that the state puts ethics under conduct. So, but that might not necessarily be obvious. Um, I mean, it could say civility, ethics, and debate. It could. Um, is another option. Pat? I'm going to quote <laughs> Alice in Wonderland, Humpty Dumpty. When I choose a word, Humpty Dumpty said, it means exactly what I choose it to mean, nothing more and nothing less. I think everything should be out of there except code of conduct. Let's keep it simple. Okay. I, what's happening for me is I'm trying to feel into, like, what does conduct mean? What? <laughs> Mean um, what you want it to <laughs> right. <jump> directly. <laughs> um how about we just say how to act <laughs> rule six how to act but if, yeah, if, if using if the, the method, public are looking for ethics is this the only place they'll find it that's why i think yeah if we add it into the title here and they search for the word they'll find the actual rule um, another thing to think of, you know, I, I was looking at the rule titles, we've got preservation of order, right to speak and vote, conflict of interest and ethics, and then we're down here with counselors conduct, public civility and engagement, and um, general rules for conduct. Um, so conduct should probably be listed first, no matter what, if we're thinking about order, we should probably talk about conduct, debate, and conflict of interest or ethics or something there, if you want to list them out, they should probably be listed in the order they're sort of referenced within the rule. Um, but I'm with Pat, I think just code of conduct. I'm fine, I don't. <laughs> Is everyone, would everyone be comfortable with keeping it simple code of conduct? Yes. Okay, good. So let's just go with that. Um, so the changes we've made are we've changed the title of rule six and we've added the mgl links for and expanded the title of conflict of interest rule uh whatever rule that was <laughs> we'll get there <laughs> uh, okay and um, Pat and Mandy, do we need to re-vote this like as a recommendation um, to go back for Monday's meeting? Is it, or do we just report back? I think Pat, we've done it 
differently depending on what in the past. I think sometimes we've revoted a recommendation that says, you know, that, or I think sometimes GOL hasn't and just the chairs reported, hey, based on comments, here are the changes that GOL is now presenting final version. So I, it's- This might be a time to vote simply because there was so much discussion in the council. Yeah. So I think if we revote our recommendation, that would be good. And, and what I'd like to do is um, somehow ask or put in the report, but maybe Athena can ask, um, and I don't know if this is appropriate, so tell me if it sounds off, but I, I think it would be really good for council members to listen to this part of our meeting before Monday if they have the opportunity, because I think it was a really productive, useful discussion. So at least folks who want to know kind of what the discussion was. Um, and I've been linking to our YouTube uh, meetings in the report anyway. So I can just maybe put like the part of this, the, the mark for this. Um, so, all right, Pat, do you want to make, or actually before a motion is made, um, did anyone else pick up on anything? Anna, I know listening back had asked a question about why in hearings we took out the those in opposition, those in favor, but it seemed that she was satisfied with the answer that we provided. So I didn't feel like there was anything additional we needed to review with that. But did anyone else pick up on anything that we need to review based on that initial discussion before we go to a vote to a motion on this? Okay. All right. Um, Pat, do you want to make a motion? Sure. If I do it wrong, correct me, Mandy. Um, <laughs> I'm, I move that we accept the code of conduct as amended. Recommend the council pass or adopt. Okay, that one. <laughs> Recommend the council adopt the changes to the rules the, of procedure as, as amended. amended. Yeah, yeah. A second. Oh. The rules of procedure, not the code of, not just this section, the rules of I, procedure. Oh. It is the rules of procedure. It, it's yeah. the whole thing, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, Athena, um, hopefully you got that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm adding words. I hope you'll um, forgive me for tweaking that, but it's gonna be what I have is to recommend the council adopt the changes to the rules of procedure as amended at the March 30, 2022 GOL meeting. Thank is you, that, Athena. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Perfect. And Jennifer seconded that, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Any further discussion? All right, so let's vote. Um, Pat? Aye. I'm an aye, Jennifer? Aye. Anika? Aye. Mandy? Aye. Great. So that's unanimous. Um, and thank you, Mandy. Um, so let me see here. Lynn was with us, um, and now is not with us. And I'm not, my thinking was she was here to, um, listen in or participate in the discussion about standing committees. Um, but we need to move on to that now. So, oh yes, Athena. Um, I'm not sure if Lynn was was planning on sharing this with you, but um, TSO has this on their agenda, I think next week. So they haven't had an opportunity to review and, and um, discuss the, the proposed changes. I just wanted to make you aware that they intend to and they haven't had an opportunity yet. Actually, I'm so glad you brought that up, Athena, because I participated or I was at the TSO meeting this past week. And I heard Dorothy say that there was a referral to her from GOL with respect to this matter. And I didn't refer it to her. I, I think she, she meant that as in she was, you know, you were looking for feedback from her and rather than the way we normally use the word referral. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Okay. That makes more sense because so my understanding just with this committee is that I was asking for feedback from Lynn from the CRC chair and from the TSO chair, but not necessarily that it would come to a discussion of the full committee, but Mandy, did you do that in CRC? What was the 
So, yeah, I, I brought it to the full committee for the committee to discuss, and then I wrote to you with what the committee's thoughts were, um, and okay. I, I referenced it in the committee as um, GOL has asked CRC to have a discussion before they make any decisions or something like that. I don't think I referenced formal referral, but yeah, like I, I did okay. say GOL's doing this and they want to hear from the committees it would be affected by, and so we did have a full committee discussion. Um, it's up to the chair whether to do that or not. Clearly, Dorothy has has decided to have the full committee discussion. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Um, but it was done on that uh, informalish basis of GOL asked us as a courtesy to do this. You know? Yeah, yeah. I guess I just, Athena, were you going to say something? Yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. Um, no, no, I was fine. just looking at the TSO um, sort of work plan for the next few meetings coming up, and they have that on their April 7th meeting. And it looks like Dorothy had planned to reach out to you, Michelle, to see if you could attend um, to give any the committee any context about that conversation when they have it on April 7th. On April 7th. Okay. So then I'm wondering, I'm sorry I missed that. And I, you know, process wise, I think when Lynn heard that at the TSO meeting too, she thought like, can you send me the referral? And I, I was like, I don't think there was one, but um, so I wonder, do we feel like we should wait to have this discussion until that happens? Okay, all right. Um, okay, so let's see here then. We're gonna do that. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, great. So let's then wait. We're going to wait until 10 o'clock on the Juneteenth. The only um, thing I just wanted to check in with you, Anika, I know you had said that there were some additions to the Juneteenth proclamation that were like local pieces or something that you had clarified. Um, would it be useful for us to look at those now before our sponsors come so that when our sponsors come, we're just doing the review? Or do you want to do that with the sponsors, that piece of things? I mean, I think that it would be fine. It was just the, there were the titles of the regiments that were there that were, you know, um, that were not listed correctly. And then there's um, just one regiment that was not um, acknowledged that is, you know, that should be included. So that was it. They were just, um, in for, there were the titles. Okay. So we can just do that when they, yeah. when they get or, here. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that it would matter one way or the other. Um, because I'm, I'm sure everyone would want their titles to be listed correctly. So, I mean, if you, however, we could put it in if we want a filler or if there's something else we can discuss in the, in the interim, that's fine too. Sure. Yeah. So the other item on our agenda is the, to begin discussing the equity review lens process. Um, Jennifer, I see your hand. Um, yeah, I didn't know if I should, I thought if we had some time, I was going to save this for items not anticipated 48 hours. So if we have a little time, should I, it's, it's not a big item for discussion, but a, a constituent actually wrote me um, after the- oh, Jennifer, um, will, you, will you just pause for one second, yeah. just because I've not run into this situation before. I just want to okay. make sure from a process perspective. So um, somebody help me out here. If there's an item that a counselor brings to a committee meeting um, that was not anticipated, um, that didn't have to be put on the agenda within that 48 hours. It's fine for it to come direct at the meeting. Mandy, Pat, yeah. Athena? Yes. Um, okay. Under the section when we get to eight. So yeah, should I wait? I didn't know if you want to do it out of order if we had time. One you know. of my suggestions was we've got 15 minutes till 10. We should maybe do items four, five, six, seven, and eight if we can get through all of that in 15 minutes, which is public comment minutes, announcements, next agenda, items not anticipated, and then go back to Juneteenth and presentation discussion after that, because we can get all those little things done maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, so Jennifer, why don't you go ahead with that item and then we'll... Okay, so it had to do with um, at the last council meeting where we were discussing the polling locations. And this person said, would it be more, I don't know, efficient to maybe have before the polling something, and that maybe it's not gonna happen for 10 years, 
it goes to the full council, it goes to a committee first to, to sort of review it. And she even suggested to go to TSO. And so she was writing to me saying, I see you're on GOL. Is this something GOL might refer to TSO? So I didn't know if really, again, how I should get that out in the conversation. So we don't have to discuss it now. I just, Passing you know, it might be something we want to refer to TSO, we may or may not, but is, so is, does that come under 48 hours not anticipated or? <laughs> Go ahead, Mandy. So given that GOL committees don't tend to have the capability of referring something to another committee, even if it's already been referred to that committee, I'm not sure it's something GOL deals with per se, but I would say for Jennifer, bring it up with Lynn as president. Okay. So the next time it's on, it can be part of the discussion. You know, the first time discussion was just, oh, we're going to try and vote on this or we're going to have a first discussion and all. And, and maybe part of that discussion needs to be, should this be referred, especially given all of the different concerns, right? right. You know, maybe it's best to refer it instead of keep bringing it just back bring to, it to the council. Um, right. So I would talk to Lynn about something like that um, in terms of getting a, a formal referral somewhere, maybe, or at least bringing it up at discussion. Okay. And Lynn might send it back to GOL, but it would be Lynn, right. Okay. Thank you. And could there be clarification? Why would GOL, so this constituent came to you as a member of GOL on polling location? She thought maybe it should go to TSO. Okay. And I said, whatever she first wrote, and I was like, okay, you know, that might, and then she went back, she goes, well, I see that GOL is really who, you know, sort of addresses committee responsibilities and you're on GOL. So that's I how, see. yeah. That's how it came about. Okay. So I thought, was, part of I thought it was a good charge. suggestion. It could be potentially part of the committee charge discussion of would you exactly. want to add review of polling locations to a TSO charge? Right, exactly. But I should refer, I should ask that of Lynn first and then she might for this, refer back. For the specific discussion on the current discussion regarding polling locations. Okay. Otherwise you can just bring it up during committee structure discussion. Okay, thank Does you. Does that make sense? Both of those yes. things can be, Both. yeah, okay. okay. All right, good. So thank you, Jennifer. Um, so okay. I don't, I, oh please. I have another unanticipated item or next sure. agenda preview, which is FinCom appointments. We need to get started on that. And the first okay. thing that should show up on the agenda is the review of the bulletin board notice, um, which technically under the recommendation procedures needs to come to GOL before it gets posted. Um, so it should show up on the next agenda because we don't have a lot of time depending on, yeah, there's just not a lot of time because that bulletin board notice needs posted for two weeks before we can determine a sufficiency of an applicant pool. So if we don't post it till uh, April 13th. 13th, we can't declare the pool sufficient until the end of April. Um, so it really does need to be on the next agenda. Okay. Unless just, we're taking it up under unanticipated items, but. <laughs> okay, and just to make sure I'm clear, because the finance committee is full. So what you're saying is that GOL's job is to make sure or to declare. So there is an, at least one impending vacancy. So the resident members are appointed for one or two years in their staggered terms. So every year there's at least one impending vacancy. And so GOL's role is to recommend an appointment, whether that be a reappointment of someone currently on who wants to continue or someone new, if they don't want to continue, there is a term expiring June 30. And our goal should be to make a recommendation on who to appoint starting July 1 in June so that there is no empty space there. Got it. And so what is the actual agenda item called for the 13th? Um, recommendations to finance committee resident member or appoint recommendations of appointments to finance committee re resident members. And then I always list what part of that I'm doing, which would be bulletin board notice. Bulletin board. Okay. I'm going to look back at, at previous with George. I'm George. Feel probably free to chat because I'm, I'm yeah. the chair. CRC does the other two that the council does. So. Okay. Helpful. Thank you. <laughs> I, I can walk you through that 
George also left a nice timeline too in SharePoint. So we can help walk you through what all needs to be done and when. Okay, excellent. Pat, did you have your hand up? I did, but I don't need to speak now. Okay. Um, so just kind of continuing then for the next agenda, just so that you know what what I had in mind and then taking these things into consideration. So um, let me just um, look here. So we'll be coming back by that point to the standing committee structure as long as TSO has that conversation um, at their next meeting. Um, we'll deal with the impending vacancy on the, the finance committee thing that Mandy just brought up. Um, we are set to review, we'll hopefully be set to review the plant um, resolution that we receive emails about pretty frequently. Um, hopefully the sponsors will be ready for that. And I have invited the community sponsors to that meeting. Um, and then let me see, by April 25th, we need the Jewish American Heritage Proclamation, but um, ooh. because so yeah, our next agenda is gonna, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a lot to it then. Um, we'll have to do the plant, we'll have to do the Jewish American Heritage Month Proclamation. Does anybody have an update on that? Um, I know Jennifer, you were you kind of involved with that with Dorothy Pam or? Um, I will follow up with her. She was really okay. taking the lead on that. Okay, that would be great. Yeah. Um, are there any other items that people thought would be on the agenda for our next meeting, other than what we just discussed? Okay. All right. Um, so. Let's adopt, uh, it's 9.52, let's adopt the March, or yeah, let's adopt the March 9th meeting minutes. Uh, Mandy, would you bring those up? And just while Mandy's doing that, so the reason the meeting last week got canceled is because I inadvertently posted an extra meeting because when we met on the 9th, that was an extra meeting. And then we decided not to meet that following week. So that's why that happened. Um, all right. So yes, Pat. Can I make a suggestion? Um, I always read the minutes in advance of the meeting. And I, I'm hoping that other people are doing that as well. So we're not reading and checking the minutes that this, this I would like to see, I'm being cranky because it's so early in the morning. Um, I'd like to see this sort of be an automatic thing and, and that unless somebody has read it and they see something that needs changing or addressing, uh, it should be pretty simple to, you know, make the motion to accept the minutes as written or in or as amended if there is an amendment. It just would speed things up a little bit, I think. Sure. Yeah, I think that's definitely sounds more efficient if we can. If so, maybe if you like haven't had a chance to review it, and we get to that point, just say that you need a minute to review it. But otherwise, we'll assume that everybody has reviewed it. So, are there any amendments? All right. So. Um, I move to adopt the meeting minutes for the March 9th, 2022 um, GOL committee. <laughs> Athena, Second. do what you want with that. <laughs> Second, DeAngelis. Okay, DeAngelis. I think I heard Mandy second it first. That's fine. I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, whoever. Okay, let's vote. Um, Anika. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Jennifer. Yes. Mandy. Aye. I'm an I and Pat. Aye. Excellent. Okay. So those are approved. Um, are there any announcements? Okay. 
Um, let's see. What falls under an announcement? What's <laughs> what's in a what's a what's a proper announcement for GOL? <laughs> I am working on not saying that I'm really old because oh. a friend called me on it in a good way. And, but I do have to say, I re really am old and I was 76 on March 11th. That's a totally probably oh. inappropriate announcement. But. <laughs> That's a great announcement. Happy birthday. <laughs> birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes. And I'm March 6th, so we're, we're Pisces. Uh, oh, we have to get to, oh, I have to write that down. Well, happy that birthday to you. a lot, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Jennifer? No, I just said happy birthday to Michelle too. Thank yeah, you. yes, happy birthday, Michelle. Thank How you. old are you? Uh, <laughs> um, I turned forty-two. All right, a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mandy. Oh, Jennifer. I'm going to go to Mandy and then you, Jennifer. Yeah. Can I just stop the video for one minute for me? Oh yeah. I, yeah. Okay. It's okay. You want, I just, you want to stop your video? It, it, can I, I? I shouldn't. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I know. Yes. Can I do that for a second? Okay. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mandy. I was going to say a proper announcement. GOL well almost never has announcements, but if you, you know, if someone wanted to make an announcement, it could be things like, oh, this coming Friday at 2 30 is the flag raising for the child abuse right. awareness and yeah. prevention month proclamation that, you know, w went through our committee. But yeah, GOL well doesn't really have announcements. <laughs> okay. Well, that just sort of um, touches actually on what I was going to announce, which is, and I don't know if it falls into an announcement, but since you said that, Mandy, um, so there have been some questions that have been raised around proclamation, resolutions, commemorations, how to, who sponsors them, who brings them forward, um, how are they properly uh, made available and noticed to the community, particularly when there's an event attached. Um, so like, for example, with the Ukraine that came forward by community sponsors, we worked on that here. It didn't make it into the community calendar because there was a sort of a gap in the process where, because it wasn't like the Human Rights Commission, for example, that was bringing it forward, it didn't get to one of our community participation officers. So I am meeting with our community participation officers on, well, tentatively Monday, but it may be at some other point next week, just to um, kind of talk about those process pieces of particularly proclamations, resolutions, and um, commemorations. Mm -hmm. So that was my announcement. <laughs> so if you have any feedback that would be helpful around that, um, please share it with me. That is a proper announcement, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, I didn't really like make a big deal about it, but okay. All right. So <laughs> it is almost 10 and I do see that, um, looks like we have Ms. Bridges in the audience, um, did, um, and if, if she could be brought in Athena, that would be wonderful. Um, Anika, did, did Dr. Shabazz say he was going to be? able to join us? Let me just check. Yes, he said that he received the link. Okay, all right. Welcome, Ms. Bridges, nice to see you. Very nice to see you. <laughs> We're just waiting a moment to see if Dr. Shabazz is going to be joining us. Um, so since it's not quite 10, but maybe what we can do, Mandy, is, um, yep. <laughs> telepathically uh, communicating here. So um, I would I need like to know the full list of sponsors. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let me, I want to make sure that I don't miss anybody on this. So hang on one second. And so I can re refer to my email.
Anika, do you know some? Uh, well, I just I just have a little correction. So Deborah is um, D E B O R A, no H. Sorry about that, Deborah. <laughs> That's all right. She caught it first. <laughs> Um, so we have a lot of sponsors on this, um, no surprise here. Um, so we have Lynn, Dorothy, um, Mandy, Anna, myself, um, Anika goes with uh, Anika, <laughs> right? <laughs> Is your hand still up for a comment, oh. Anika? Please, no. No, okay. no. <laughs> All right. Um, and then, did I admit, Jennifer, did you write to me and say that you wanted to sponsor this? Well, I'm sorry, I think I responded to Lynn that I did. Okay, I don't think I saw that, okay. but I had a feeling that, okay, great. And then, um, Pat? Small correction, it should say community sponsors, since there are multiple, yeah. And Pat, are you putting your name on this one? Um, I would love my name on it, but if, if you, yes. Okay. All right, so I think that covers, covers it all. Um, just reviewing one more time. Eight. Yeah. It's already passed. <laughs> there are What's eight that? sponsors. There are eight. There are eight council sponsors. Yeah. It's passed. <laughs> no yeah, surprise. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dr. Shabazz is not here yet, but um, Anika, I'm gonna hand this over to you to um, bring those changes, please, that that you had talked about earlier. Okay, and if my mom could correct me if I get this wrong, because she is uh, the voice for this. So for, and I don't mean to be the person to bring us down to the end, but I think I have to, because this is where, uh, okay. So oh. if I'm not mistaken, the correct title is the 54th, Massachusetts Volunteer Infantry Regiment. Correct. And that would also be the same for the 55th. <clears throat> and then the fifth, the uh, for the fifth should read the fifth Massachusetts volunteer cavalry and now cavalry regiment cavalry regiment okay mm -hmm. sorry um um if people that most most people don't know about the 55th and if you wanted to put after that if the 55th was actually the sister regiment of the 54th what does that mean Ms. Bridges? The what sister. Does, yeah, what does that mean? What I, that was, was um, when uh, black men in the country that were slaves back then and free black men heard about the 54th in Massachusetts. They wanted to join. They couldn't, I mean, from all over the country. Yeah. And of course, it was a little bit difficult for them to get just a get to Massachusetts. <laughs> so by the time they got to Massachusetts, the 54th was at its capacity. Uh, okay. So Governor Andrew authorized the 55th, which was the sister regiment of the 54th. Thank you. So for they weren't all from Massachusetts, but they got to Massachusetts so they could join. Wow. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's really interesting. And I do see that Dr. Shabazz is here. So um, if we could bring him in, that would be great. And 
while, while we're doing that, I'll talk about some of the changes you'll see, which are, you know, I'll talk about the more substantive ones later, but the ands, the semicolons, all of that, I, I went through and, and made the changes to the capitalizations and all. Um, some. Something like an and where here. it's crossed out of the Massachusetts. Yeah, um, that that's because it said originally 54th Regiment of the Massachusetts 5th Cavalry. Mm -hmm. So now here, I can show you what this one looks like now. Um, so it will read, um, including Amherst residents, jo Christopher John Henry, James and Charles Thompson, who served in the 54th, 55th and 5th. So we might need to reword that sentence. Right, because Christopher Thompson, uh, Charles Thompson, they were in the fifth Calvary. Oh. Okay, I well, see. I'm, so I'm which ones pause, were in I'm the gonna fifth Calvary? I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to pause for a second to, um, one second, I'll be, uh, let me just pause. And that's good because I'd like to welcome Dr. Shabazz um, and also ask a question. Dr. Shabazz, can you hear us? Yes, I can, thank you. Okay, um, would you like Dr. Dimitri Shabazz to be included as a community sponsor with yourself and Ms. Bridges? Well, she was a part of the Civil War uh, Tablets Committee uh, historically, I think it would be fine. Okay, great. All right. So um, maybe and, we- and Dr. Shabazz, can you make sure I spelled her name right? Just would be an E after D. Okay. Like that? And um, D-E-M-E. -E. And then another E. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. So let's go back to Ms. Bridges. Um, please continue. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't raise my hand. I'm sorry. Oh, um, no, don't worry. <laughs> Christopher and Charles were with the 5th Cavalry. What did you just say? And they weren't the members of the 55th. What? Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out how to recognize the 55th in this somehow. Do we want a separate, well, um, Dr. Shabazz, we're just sort of figuring out um, this paragraph where, um, trying to get this more clarified and organized here. Uh-huh. That sounds, I mean, that's. And then we have to fix this where they are laid to rest. Because that sounds really weird right now. Mm. Can you say more about that, Mandy? So if you read the sentence that recognizes connection to Juneteenth, pays homage to soldiers, including the Thompsons from the 54th, the Thompsons from the 5th, members of the 55th, who were among the soldiers in Texas for liberation, where they are laid to rest in West Cemetery, <laughs> located in Amherst Center. Well, um, right. the fifth- like a disconnect to what is going definitely needs included, but- 
and it almost felt to me like, and I don't know how others felt about this, but that this was like so poignant and powerful with respect to Amherst that like, could this be brought up to like further up in the, you know, proclamation or should it be, or does it feel to the sponsors like having it um, sort of to tie everything together is, is best? It just that particular paragraph was really powerful and and, and sort of help. Yes, please, sorry, Anita. Uh, yes, sorry. and you I, just I, jump I, I in anytime. Up, yes. I know, but it will be. No, you know what it is. I can't see everyone together. So, but now I'm scrolled up better. Okay, uh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I was also just a, just a point out. Like I believe that this proclamation was written before um, the authors would know about. Uh, the the soldiers connected to the 54th, uh, 55th, and and the 5th Cavalry. So, I mean, I, I agree with that because it's, I mean, if we are, if we're talking about Juneteenth, there's our related base um, from Emerson as we've moved this up uh, for the um, Black History Month proclamation is kind of like where, where it starts. Um, and I also just wanted to uh, point out because there are quite a few soldiers uh, that were, wait a minute, I'm sorry. I Should we, um, I don't know that it would go without saying, but that we're paying homage to um, the African-American soldiers because we are naming a handful of over 300. You know, so we're, you know, where we are focusing on, um, for, for Juneteenth, we're focusing on that military action that came from the black soldiers. I, you know, we again have over 300 from the area. So I think we wouldn't want to, we want to be specific and not, ex, you know, not exclude anyone. And also um, when you say we're among the soldiers in Texas for the liberation, um, it was the fifth cavalry not the 55th where that went to Texas to liberate. It was, it was the 5th Calvary. And last, I'm not sure how the other sponsors or anyone involved will see, but where it says for um, we're among the soldiers on Texas for the liberation. I mean, I think that uh, are we lessening the significance that yes, this was a liberation, but that we have folks who were among the brave who went and put an end to slavery in America, at least in you know title. Um, mm -hmm to really, you know, uh, honor that, them for that and also the connection that we here have to them. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice hearing from near and afar like that. Were they all from Amherst, the 300 that you referred to? It was the Amherst area. Mm. Is the West Cemetery piece somewhere? Yeah, I, it is. I, I'm I'm working on that. Um, okay. Yeah. Take, that's fine. Yeah. Because I was trying to move up the regiment to the top. Um, Absolutely. So let me show some markup for a second. So. Um, we're creating these two whereases, separating them. Does yeah. this, Deborah and Dr. Shabazz, does this read good for you guys, you all? 
for now, uh, and we'll get down to the West Cemetery part later, but. Um, And Pat, I saw that while while Mandy's working on this, I saw that your hand was raised. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a minor point where it says, including over 300 residents of the Amherst area. I think it should say from the Amherst area, but that's very minor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a word missing there between whereas and pays homage? Was that? Yeah. We, yeah. So I, I do think that we should go through um, paragraph by paragraph once we sort of straighten some of these pieces out just to make sure that everything looks good. Um, but before that, I just, Dr. Shabazz, um, did, did you want to add anything to? Uh, just what in the long, in the long, whereas it's um, we pay homage, and then you start with the African Americans, then you say including over three hundred. So it sounds like it's the three hundred is referring to African Americans, <laughs> and, and yeah, and that's not that's not the case. So it might want to be maybe just pull that out to note that you know over three hundred soldiers and sailors came from the Amherst area. Um, I'm trying to look up uh, up ahead, um, or maybe that's even further down. But um, but we're, I, I see the way you're, we're approaching it is to try to telescope um, the, 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 the action to, to Juneteenth and to uh, the participation of um, of our soldiers from this area, from Amherst, in that particular action, and I think that that is that's that's you don't want to bury the lead. That is the lead uh, yes. in relation yes. to June to Juneteenth. But then the larger story is, you know, that there were three uh, over three hundred uh, soldiers and sailors from the Amherst area that participated in the war, not not just in the uh, in the action in Galveston. Right. Yeah, that's, really that, that's true. In, when you, you're right, Shabazz, when, you, when it says including over 300 residents, that, that seems to read like that's 300 African-American residents. That's not the case there. So I've attempted a change. Yeah. Let me know if that's okay to you guys. I removed the African-American at the front and added it in front of the specific residents we name. Sounds good. Looks good. That's good. That, that works. Okay. Anika, that works. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Shabazz? Does that work for you, Dr. Shabazz? Well, we can come back to we can come back to this one um, just to make sure. But Mandy, are you ready to bring it up to the top, and we'll go through paragraph sure. by paragraph? Okay, great. We'll fix the West Cemetery one when we get down there. Okay, I have a question on the title. Um, do we generally date like do we each year update to say two thousand twenty two? Too. And the reason I'm asking in this case is because I think um, Ms. Bridges and Anika have brought forward information new from last time. And so just to kind of recognize that this is an updated version. Uh, okay, let's make sure we got the sponsors look good. Um, and Mandy, the town of Amherst Human Rights Commission, that was, uh, they were the, with Jen Jennifer essentially wrote this, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just, they have been the, I think they were the sponsor last year. And so okay. I'm, I'm presuming they're continuing to sponsor this. Yeah, and this is this is sort of one of the questions that I have for that meeting on Monday, um, because it 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 
it's been, I think, really amazing for us to involve community members in these um, in these uh, proclamations and resolutions. And there are committees that have been doing these already. So, you know, also like Jennifer wrote this and, you know, ha have we ever had staff sponsors on these things? So these are the kind of questions I want to ask um, on Monday. All right, so let's see, let's start with the first whereas and um, just raise your hand if you have any questions or I'll just say I added the word on that I think just got deleted. There were a number of changes between last year's and this year's, and I think that on got accidentally deleted. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Just one thing, if you could change uh, the whereas to issued the Emancipation Proclamation because um, I'm not sure from what I can remember if he actually physically signed anything that day on January 1. It was actually written, the preliminary document was written in September to take effect on January 1. So I don't think on New Year's Day he actually signed anything. Important change, yeah. Okay. Um, any other changes on this one here? Okay, um, let's see, second paragraph. Just all those commas. Well, one other thing on that, and I'm just being, I guess, kind of nitpicky. It says within any state or designated part of a state that was really limited to those in rebellion because actually Delaware, New York, all these different northern states uh, that are and border states were untouched, even though, you know, uh, were untouched by the proclamation. So it, the way it reads there by any within any state, it's not. Yeah, it was in rebellion. OK. Great. Paragraph two. Yes, Anika. I just have a comment in support of, and thanks for the uh, for community sponsors and participation because and, and acknowledging um, Jennifer and the Human Rights uh, Commission that you know um, you know for putting this together. So this is a, a lot of what you see. You know, if you Google um, Juneteenth, and then you know it's really nice to have that input. You know, from Dr. Jabaz, and then you know locally what makes this ours, you know, to add this in. And so I just wanted to, you know, say that just for as a, you know, just an appreciation for the community sponsors today and those that have joined us recently. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that, that big verbal kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. Um, okay, so paragraph three. So this is where, Mandy, we split out into two paragraphs. And is everything looking good and clear? Let's just take the two of these. So paragraph three and four together. Um, is everything looking good? And Dr. Shabazz, your hand is up. So please. Nope. Okay. Nope. I'm good. And that, that paragraph looks good. Okay, great. All right, three. So let's go to then paragraph six. So we're on the one that starts Juneteenth as a reminder. Yep. I'm curious what the what what Anika and the community sponsors. It, 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 did this paragraph does this resonate and is that if there are any any changes to that one i'm sorry which one are you which yeah. um so juneteenth is a reminder oh, of the oh. explicit mistreatment look good 
Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So now we're at Juneteenth is a second Independence Day. Is it to our nation or for our nation? Four uh, seems four. better. Yeah, four does seem to sound better. And I put a semicolon. We tend to try and do one sentence per whereas. So I did a semicolon. I wonder if a comma might be better instead of a semicolon. Uh, right here? Yeah, comma. Hmm. Have a dash in front of the whereas. Oh, that dash is a deletion of a space. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Track <laughs> changes are really. Yeah. Annoying. I'm really I'm annoying. Annoying. I'm looking. My eyes. Did it say me. influence that the between that and African American influence that the to, to recognize the many contributions and influence. Uh, yeah. And Anika, I see your hand is up. Oh, um, okay. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a to a country. So I'm just feeling really called to ask or just sort of put something out there um, that maybe Dr. Shabazz or Ms. Bridges or Anika would be able to respond to if, if you'd like. And just that um, in the recent years, actually just in the past one or two years, I have literally like walked into JCPenney and seen like a Juneteenth set up, you know what I mean, with all sorts of like, sort of like a celebratory as they do with New Year's Eve, for example, you know, where it, 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 it's very much um, being marketed in this way that on one hand seems wonderful that there's accessibility and awareness being brought to this. And on the other hand, feels like what's happening hap is what happens with a lot of these things. Um, so I was just sort of curious what thoughts were around like the connection between the reminder of the explicit mistreatment and then the celebration piece. And like, if there are just any thoughts about, about that, um, I would appreciate hearing them, but no pressure at all, just if it's. Can you be a little more specific when you're talking about your, the question or the connection between um, I guess the, 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 the real question is like, how do folks, particularly white folks that may just be learning about Juneteenth um, and maybe are learning because they saw a JCPenney stand when they walked in, you know, how do we, how can we really on a more deep level um, understand what the purpose of this celebration that has now been signed into, you know, in Massachusetts as, as a holiday and hopefully will follow. Um, so that's the question. And it might not need like a big answer. I just wanted to put it out there that I feel that disconnect. And I just want to kind of bring that forward. I'm sure Shabazz and my mom would have more to say, but I think that also um, the fact that it was, um, we're acknowledging that it's considered a, a second um, Independence Day and then just um, the nature of um, Juneteenth always be co being connected with Jubilee, which is a celebration. So um, mm -hmm. it is a day of celebration. Um, and I think that, you know, when, you know, when you have people uh, learning about um, an event through napkins at Target or whichever, um, you know, you can have that disconnect that goes through, you know, it, it channels party. Um, but in a sense, it, it really is. But I, I think that when people think about the 4th of July, they understand that there was meat and what sacrifice and whichever was behind, you know, that celebration to, to lead to it. But, you know, other than that, in my opinion, we're in you know, this is after 2020 and, you know, 
Um, I think if we keep ourselves centered on what is behind these events, because we have some others coming up, things, people, cultures that are really popular and trendy now, and you know we might see the same type of napkins show up in Walmart for you know Native American History Month, so yeah. Heritage Month rather, you know, and Indigenous Peoples Day. So I feel as long as um, we're really connecting with what's behind that, you know, hopefully we can encourage others to learn that story. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, Dr. Shabazz, did you want to? What, what, what Counselor Anika Lope said is, is uh, what I would second. I would only add, you know, I'm um, my, my um, own political orientation is that is, is anti capitalist. I think capitalism has run its course and it's time oh, to give yeah. way to a to a more so socialistic uh, uh, um, movement for our political economy. But at any rate, until that happens, commercialization is always uh, a facet of, of holidays and anything that, that becomes popular, people are gonna try to monetize and commercialize it. But what I wanna mention really on, on the, the deeper thing I think I'm hearing from you, Michelle, is that um, the, I would say have on the town of Amherst website if you could ask jennifer to put the link put a link to uh president biden's proclamation on juneteenth day of observance 2021 when he signed it into effect as a national holiday uh juneteenth day of observance mm -hmm. um that that whoever wrote that for him did a really good job of addressing the the tension of addressing the um uh, what I, what is at the heart of what I'm what I hear you saying, Michelle? If I could just say one part of it, it um, they uh, take a quote from Psalm 30, uh, proclaiming that quote: "Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come cometh in the morning." Uh, end quote. Juneteenth marks both the long hard night of slavery and discrimination, and the promise of a brighter morning to come. Um, and it goes on to say, my administration is committed to building an economy and a nation that brings everyone along and finally delivers our nation's founding promise to Black Americans. Together, we will lay the roots of real and lasting justice so that we can become an extraordinary country, of the extraordinary country that was promised to all. Juneteenth not only commemorates the past, it calls us to action today. And there's more, but but the essence of it, and it's not a long proclamation, but the essence of it really gets at is a good resource for people who want to read, who want to reflect on that tension between, um, you know, uh, engaging this um, this hard issue in our history and our past, but also connecting it to the relevance of what what we're trying to do today and what we should be about for the future. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so where were we here then? Um, whereas we're, Texas- We're down to this one. Okay. Um, which was actually these three to begin with. Um, and we tried to, last year, we tried to split them up again trying to keep sentence one sentence per whereas. Um, so thoughts on, mm -hmm. this is how they were split up last year. Um, mm. Thoughts on whether that should continue or not, or if, yeah. You can put those together though. The question is how to put them together in one sentence. Yeah. Families immigrated, yeah. How were they originally put together? I thought the one, the version I saw, they were just put with semicolons in between. Is that? If I may, on the yes. first two that you're trying to merge, if you just remove the semicolon and the and, and the whereas on the next one, and just bring that up and connect it with the word with, so Texans began blah, 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 um, and historical cultural readings with 
some communities purchasing land for Juneteenth celebrations, such as Emancipation Park that in works. Houston, Texas. Okay. So it just connects those two right away. Mandy, I think, so you, there you go, okay. Okay. <laughs> I got disconnected somehow. Sorry about that. Yeah. You came back very, very quickly. Yes, I certainly did. did. Are we connecting these into one whereas? So, you Dr. Could easily. You could easily go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. Can you say that again? Yeah, you could eat. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can easily connect those two because it's all one series of actions that you're saying that this is what Texas Blacks did in response to to Juneteenth. So, um, so in addition to cookouts and so on and so forth, some also purchased land, such as the Emancipation Park in Houston, Texas. So I just was saying that's easy because it's all one, one series of actions. Oh, one series. Yeah. And so connecting all three is the suggestion. Well, I, I have to see the third one again. I just was on, on those two whereases. That, okay. that, that first one's the third one. Yeah, the third one I'd have to see again. I, I It's not showing on my screen. Okay, it says, can you highlight it again? There you go. Can you see it now, Dr. Shabazz? Nope, nope. I, I have a, just a black square for, Oh. so maybe if I refresh, but I might, it might drop me out. Could you take away the highlighting and just drop the sentence down, Mandy? so that it's the space emphasizes it. Yeah. There. Is that better, Dr. Shabazz? Okay, I re, I re, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I re um, refreshed my screen. So now I see it. And I see we got, yep, we got those two. And then is that the third you're trying to pull in? Yes. Yeah. As freed families. You know, you could move that one in with the one about Amherst residents beginning organizing right. in 2011. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of the same point that the, the celebration of it has moved out of Texas over the years, including... Oh, yeah including it moving here. That's great. So whereas freed families uh, that immigrated from Texas to other part of the United States carried uh, Juneteenth celebration, the celebration of Juneteenth with them, uh, uh, including here in Amherst, where residents began organizing community-wide celebrations as early as 2011 and then and on to the to the next whereas yeah that that's take a good out one. the they for they carried I'm gonna be shifting to my phone <laughs> okay as freed families emigrated from texas to other parts of the united states they Someone said, delete the they? I think it should be. I think it should be there. Oh, yeah. got, he said to take it out. I'm sorry. Carry the Juneteenth the Juneteenth the Juneteenth. Including in Amherst, where residents began organizing community-wide Juneteenth celebrations. That's good. That's good. And, and that, this, this section here was something that was in last year's proclamation that got deleted in the initial draft here that I thought was really important to include. Yeah. Um, and I just wanna, last year, we didn't have the privilege of having Deborah Bridges or the Shabazz's here, Dr. Shabazz here. And so we tried to figure out how early it was. Um, and I know at least Dr. Shabazz has been one of the organizers, I think from the beginning is 2011 the correct year. Anika, do you have some uh, sense of that? I I think that he would say yes, uh, okay. 2011. From my recollection, that's the year that um, okay. he has said. Okay. 
we tried to do our research as best we could last year. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I wasn't I sure. Was there, I feel like that that number is ingrained in my head. Get that okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, that one looks good. So let's go down to whereas supported by. And I just added the year in. Okay. And so, oh, Pat, please. Yeah. I'm wondering, because Dr. Shabazz brought up the fact that Biden made it a national holiday. Right. So that should be here too, that both things happened and they both happened in 2021. Yeah, and about the same month or weeks from each other. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Eighth day of observation. Yeah, the Juneteenth day of observ observance, I thought. Obs I'm observance, yes, I'm sorry, observance. You're right. And he should come before Baker. <laughs> For many reasons. <laughs> Though if we're, we've been sort of looking at things locally first in these and then- Oh, that's true, that's so true. So it's both ways, you could look at it both ways, but yeah, I agree principally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just don't like the Republican coming first. So. Uh, it's not was a good that reason. The first year that Juneteenth was declared a national day. Yes. Of observation. Observance. Of observance. observance. Sorry. I think I heard Anika say yes. Yes, I know that. Um, like right within that, I believe it was in the the last month, the month lead. So in month or two leading up to last year's celebration, it went from its first year being acknowledged as a state, um, as a state holiday, and then federally. Yeah, the federal was June 17th. Oh, yes, I remember it was, just, it was just two days before. It was June 17th. Ah, wow, um, okay. I remember his birthday. Close. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, really, hey, hey, double, double win. Mandy, do we ever put links in these? Um, I don't think we have in the past, but we certainly can. I think it would I be good to link this to that proclamation. Right, that would be great. great. I think that was a great idea. That I don't yeah. know. Also, I have one other question, um, and this might be a demanded question for proclamations in general. And now, okay, obviously we're well, I'm here, there's a link. So the, the link is acknowledging this other um, proclamation and where it came from. But if if there are sources, like do we within proclamations ever need to credit sources if they're being pulled or no? Like for instance, if, a, if content in a proclamation has been pulled from another source, do we need to note that? We did in the plant medicine resolution, I know um, we had asterisks at the bottom that cited certain things because that one was really heavy with sightings. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure generally speaking for proclamations, Pat or Mandy, do you, yeah, or, I or Athena. I, I think for some resolutions we've done it, especially when they're on matters that are a little less widely known. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a way to help the counselors and the public understand where those facts are coming from. Um, I'm not sure we've generally done it in proclamations. That doesn't mean we can't. Um, I did add the link for um, this part. It should have a hyperlink to it now. And was there something, Anika, that you felt like you wanted to cite a source for this? Uh, no, no. Just, okay. just in general, I was just say, you know, just like for consistency, if it's something that we we do. Um, yeah. You know, if information, say, has been pulled. Yeah. And so we need to fix this last whereas because okay. it's where we would leave the West Cemetery item because we moved the other half up of that whereas got 
gosh, that is just such an important piece. It really is. It's, it's just, I, I mean, is it, yeah, okay, go on, because you're doing something. There's an attempt. I really like the language. I think that it, it's very clear. I just wish that it was further up. <laughs> um, but well, we could move oh, it further yeah, up. Move it up. Good. Um, we could move it up here before this one. I think that's a good place for it. Makes sense. Yes. I think it's nice to start with, you know, who we're acknowledging and especially the connection here. Right. It's so amazing we have this connection yes. for a small town. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. It is. It's a bright light for a small town. It know? really is. It makes, <laughs> yeah. makes me proud. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's also like getting, you know, that point across is this really is something for all residents. Um, yes. You know, whether they've been from he here for a thousand years or two days to really embrace <laughs> and be part of, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I Is and that acceptable wording? Anyone want to suggest any changes? The only question I would have um, to Ms. Bridges and to Anika is whether those people should be named. I, um, I, I mean, my question, I could go, or question I thought I could go either way, give it it to my mom. Um, I, I think this is a, a, a great way to also call attention and honor the West Cemetery. Um, but I do think that if you call any specific names, you would need to say among others. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because we have, a, there are a lot of unmarked graves, you know, there yeah. are other folks who are mm -hmm. um, on the tablets. And this is kind of where you, you separate names from tablets to the actual people and their stories, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. So you'd be more comfortable just leaving it without the names or would you like to add the names that we know and then say among others? I, I mean, I, I think that it could, you know, be nice but not too repetitive because they are, it does connect them, you know, um, to where they actually are and just the significance of um, the West Cemetery in general, which, um, you know, a lot of people are not even aware of it. I um, was just having a conversation yeah, about this the other day, and a lot of people just assumed that we were talking about Wildwood or, you know, something as opposed to like one of the most historic cemeteries that's in the center of our town. Um, so I think that it is, it's nice to connect that, but I, I think it would be important to make, to say, you know, among others or others, because, you know, we're, we're definitely leaving people out. Yeah. Okay, and it's African residents who fought in the Civil War, some of whom, including, I think, we don't need some of whom? We don't need some of whom, I think you're right. Whom, we still need whom though, yeah. There you go. Yep, that yeah. looks good. And then I added back the town center because Anika's yeah. words right. and, and, and all, indicated that that's an important part. The location of that Absolutely. cemetery is quite important. Did we lose Shabazz? Is Shabazz still here? You know what? Um, oh, he is, it says talking permitted. He's not in here, but um, Dr. Shabazz, can you hear us? And, and let's see if we can yes. hear you. 
Yes, oh, I can hear you. <laughs> so my okay. question is for both you and my mom. I feel so casual over here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I know that we're linking uh, the Thompsons and they are, you know, all of these folks really are connected and lineage, but um, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but should we be, should we list Henry Jackson, his name at all? I mean, should, should his name specifically be included or are we opening up a can of, of um, worms where we're going to have to have a, um, a whole other list of names as well? No, I, um, I'll speak to that to say, I, I'll have to think a minute more on Henry Jackson, mm -hmm. but I know Jarvis Jackson is is kind of curiously not missing here. He's one that died. He's one that died in, on the, in Texas, in Brazoria, along the river. So he was at Galveston, and then he was part of a detachment that branched out after that. So I would say Jarvis Jackson's omission is perhaps a little more curious than 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 Henry. Okay. Or we could even put like Thompsons, Jackson, and Jacksons, and others. However, uh, that would be. Yep. That's, so that's Dr. Shabazz, idea. do you know which regiment Jarvis was part of? Yes, I can't look at it right now on right. my uh, uh, cell phone to be to be confirmed about it. But I want to say he might have been in the um, he might have been in the fifth cavalry. Yes, he was. Uh, there you go. Okay. He was. Sorry. And then there's this other guy, Sanford, who's actually on the mural that, you know, that looks out onto the cemetery. And uh, Sanford, you know, died there as well. There's the son of the Amherst College president that served. So you're right. If we start getting into names, too many name dropping, we exclamation, I mean, we could swell this. Yeah. Proclamation up considerably, folks. We are missing important folks. Yeah, that's why it's important. I would recommend anyone who has not been to see this, um, to see the Civil War tablet exhibit go, because this year you will see <laughs> all of the names celebrated, Amherst College president. You you will see them all, um, and hopefully we move towards some sort, you know, a document and permanent space where all of this information um, can be seen all the time. Whether, jo whether Jones Library or somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. One we, day, one day it will happen. Yes, it will. It will. <laughs> Should we say and others then in this, in this, um, in the paragraph that we're talking about? Do we need to say and others? So in Absolutely. this one, we have the and others. Yes, but in the one above that, yeah. Should we in this one say and others? <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Keep it consistent, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And Anika, has it ever been discussed when this was um, being worked on previously to include anything about the tablet? Have the tablets ever been put into this or thought about being put into this proclamation? Well, I'm seeing here that um, some of this is actually from the um, uh, pit pieces of it are from the announcement for, from last year's Juneteenth celebration. And I think that's where, you know, the folks were added in. Um, and I, I'm not sure if it is appropriate for us or how we do this. And maybe there is something that we could do for GOL as we see, you know, many other folks will do things and um, around like say their names, you know. So I don't know if there's a way that we could um, move and and towards like if we were talking about, I mean, because there's there's a number of them for the African American soldiers, but there's not that many. I just feel like for probably a proclamation for a um, a paragraph that would be a lot, but I don't know if it would be appropriate that we also like attach for that reading, whether we have community members, youth, whomever, if we actually have all of these names listed and have people say their names, like, you know, so we have, you know, so we're honoring everyone. Um, yeah. 
and then just, you know, maybe in general, or maybe, you know, as we've had a link to, and I mean, we, you could get all of the names from my mom, but as we have a link to the national, the other proclamation, maybe there's a, even a link where all of the names could be listed. Yeah, that's a really good way of doing it. Um, I agree with that too. Uh, the, uh, and I would further say something you said earlier, I don't know if it could be in the be it resolved or just be as a link as well, but encouraging people to go and see the tablets. Exactly. Somewhere ought to be ought to be part of our call. Our be I it agree. resolved. Or... Exactly. No, it's yeah. right going to be my suggestion. Somewhere in this now, therefore. I, I think that Absolutely. makes sense, Mandy. Yeah. I saw you were going for that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. And I was going to say, you know, I invite you all to please come and you'll get a different sense of everything. You'll get a different sense of really what we're talking about here when you see what's been set up here. Exactly. I think, I think you'll get a better poignant. understanding. I agree. Yeah. And I think it's more poignant than even if we put it on a website and somebody can go there and look at pictures or, or just see names. When you walk in and, and you see those big six foot, you know, 600 pound mm -hmm. tablets and the, the, the attention to it that was given over a hundred years ago by the, by the veterans who, who commissioned it, you know, it's, it's, it's powerful. It's, it is very powerful. I mean, and, and a, a quick, um, I, I had a young child come in with his grandmother and he saw his great great grandfather's name on the tablet and he, he just lit up and to see things like that he just lit up and I want to bring my class back and can I tell him about this and I said of course that's that's the the type of what that brings out that's why I love doing it and you know it's just you know if I see can... the look on the face is amazing <laughs> hmm in fact, I'll add to the poignancy to say when when I went to uh, Washington, D.C. and saw for the first time the Vietnam War Memorial and was able to touch the name of my older cousin that gave his life in that in that in that uh, terrible war that brought it all home to me as well. I cried. I mean, I cried right yeah. here on the Washington Mall. So, you know, it's it, it's something to see it to see it in person. Yeah. I'll have my last chime in. <laughs> I, think I think that it they also allow us to take what they represent, which is not just like a a war monument, which I understand they are, but really taking just that grit and and that perseverance and innovation and how you know these stories can act automatically have life-changing impacts for just so many youth, whether they're connected to these folks or not. Um, you know, because we all are in, in so many ways. And I think, you know, like, like what um, Shabazz just said, the Vietnam, or, or even if you go um, to, you know, if you go to New York City and you see the, the monument for even 9-11, it's just like you're seeing what has just come out of Horrific, horrific events and just connecting with that and seeing names and how that proposes to, to move forward, I feel is really important that we focus on here. Like this, this event, these tablets have so much to do with being like part of the fabric of this town, you know? Right, I mean, it really brings it that like this that. is connected to Amherst, something right. that changed the world <laughs> actually has some connection. Yeah, and we could all learn from that's relevant right. today, you know? So the sentence or the part of a sentence I added was we encourage the community to view Amherst Civil War tablets located in the Bank Center to honor all of our residents who served in the Civil War. Only caution is we need to make sure that that if they get moved, when they get moved, when they have a permanent place, obviously the this will be updated. Right. Absolutely. Maybe say at their temporary location. Yeah, this is this is. A no, no, it's it's the 2022 proclamation. So right. it's only it's only good for a year. Ah, well, that's true. <laughs> and this year, it, they will not be moved. They right. will not be moved in 2022. No. I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> that's a safe bet. 
All right. Well, this looks great. Um, I'm looking at the time and I'm sensitive to Athena also being here and maybe having to move on in our community sponsors. Um, so if there aren't any any changes other than any other comments changes, um, Anika, would you like to make a motion to um, to declare this clear, consistent and actionable? Okay, I move that we declare the June 20th, 20, the 2022 Juneteenth proclamation. I'm sorry, I went right out my head. Clear. Consistent and actionable. Consistent and actionable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> there a second. 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 I second. All right. <laughs> I can't, but I will. <laughs> All right. I'll I second. think Jennifer seconds. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, let's vote on this then. Um, starting with Mandy. Aye. Jennifer. Aye. Anika. Aye. Pat. Aye. And I am an I as well. So this passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bridges and Dr. Yeah, Shabazz. You're welcome. Thank you very Please, much. Uh, send to Dimitri, uh, Dr. Dimitri Shabazz, our thanks as well. And um, oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. She was here for part of it. We were okay. driving oh. together and she was here for part of it. And <laughs> thank you all for your work, Counselor. Okay. No, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 All right, so because Mandy made a really good suggestion earlier on in the meeting <laughs> with our 10 minutes that we had, um, we don't have anything else that we need to cover unless there is any, um, yes, Mandy. Just make ahead. your statement that there's no public for public comment. Oh yes, thank you. And let me make sure that's true again. It is, um, okay, there is no, uh, there are no attendees, so we do not need to make public comment. Um, or have a public comment period. So if there aren't any other questions or comments, then I will move to adjourn this meeting at 11.02 a.m. Thank you, good meeting. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye. Great Bye. meeting, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye.